Welcome home, Elisa Chef Yaving's new home, V9, finally opened up in Northeast Minneapolis. Today is the big day, and I say welcome home because if you go to the website, the first thing it says is you want to make this feel like home, mm -hmm. but not just for you and your crew, yeah. for everybody. Absolutely, yeah, and you know, it's it's crazy. Uh, I have a buddy text me and he said, hey, game day, you know, season started. And yeah. so, so uh, you know, we had a great week last week with some soft openings, worked out some kinks. Uh, work out some of the you know the ups and downs of just you know opening a restaurant and when we are so excited this is you know I, people are saying this is four years in the making but like for me it's actually seven so three years before that you know it's been kind of this idea um, that's been kind of brewing in the back and so uh, just kind of see everything come in uh, you know one of the most amazing thing is to go from this idea where we had our uh, Christian Dean our architect giving us these 3D renderings and all you had to do all for like about three years was just these 3D renderings and you kind of were just like touching the computer screen to, to visually actually be in it and it's amazing. Yeah, how does it feel? It feels great, you know, um, I think I, there has to come a point where you're just, you gotta just let go and things aren't gonna go the way you want it to go, you know, it's it's kind of like, I'm a football fan so it's kind of like preseason, right? Uh, practice, you know, it's like, hey, you know, drops, you know, are going to happen, pass is going to be overthrown, uh, you know, blocking assignments are going to be missed, and it's okay. And we told our team, it's about 1%. Every day we're coming in, we, we're telling ourselves, let's be 1% better. What's that 1%? Because after all those 1% gets added, it's 100% better. That's a great analogy. Mm -hmm. The food. We know it, you're bringing your monk culture, mm -hmm. dishes from your childhood. Yeah. What is... And this is probably going to be hard to answer. A dish that you're like super excited for people to try here. So there's two dishes that I'm really excited. Okay. Uh, one of them is our chicken dish. So Bell and Evan chicken. Uh, we debone the whole chicken, right? So it's just it's imagine just a big piece of you know almost boneless chicken, and we just spread it out real thin, put it in a basket, and we grill it, and it's all about the skin. It's about getting that real crispy skin on it. And then, you know, there was just the way that my dad taught me how to grill. It was just, you throw it over the fire, and then we always say that you just let that smoke kiss the meat. See, that's all they're doing. They're, they're having a great intimate time together. And then the next thing... <laughs> is this super work? Yeah, yeah <laughs> Sorry, it, it is. Going. Absolutely, it works, as long as it's food. And yeah. the next thing is we have a carrot dish. It's a grilled carrot dish. Okay. You know, and, and on top of it, uh, on the bottom, we have this coconut, um, you know, it's coconut yogurt. You know, and it's very herbaceous. And a lot of people will look at that and be like, well, that's not Hmong. And we're like, yeah, it is because there's these elements, these flavors that we're using that are Hmong flavors, but we might present it a little different, but it's, it's still Hmong. And it's carrots, like, and it's also Midwest. Like, carrots is so Midwest. And right now, it's, it's just super delicious. And we, so we love it. And those two dishes that, you know, I really love to highlight. You're opening up in a neighborhood full of reputable chefs and other restaurants creating something kind of unique here in this area. Mm -hmm. Was that on purpose? Did you want to be around this or is this the spot that just opened and you thought this is great? You know, I think that there was a, there's two parts of that. One, uh, when, the, when the spot opened up and it was available, we're like, oh yeah, this is a no brainer. You know, so we were excited. And then two, um, we wanted to be in a neighborhood spot. We wanted a place where you say, how do we set roots? How do we, you know, become a community? I think it's really reflective of, you know, uh, all the Hmong refugees and immigrants that came to America. It was, we want to start to build a community. How do we do that? It wasn't that we were, we wanted to just go find a place for a few months and then go to the next place. But it's like, how do we plant roots? And it's so ingrained into our own history. Um, and so those are the kind of the two ways of doing it. My, my favorite thing is this. Like we got Joni right here across the alley. We got uh, Oro right over there. And it's been so cool because we're, we, we, we feel like these neighbors that are literally kind of borrowing, uh, you know, cups of sugars from each other. The other day we were looking for, we, we, we didn't have agar agar. So I run over to the Gustavo and I'm like, hey, do you guys have any agar agar? And he's like, oh, hey, I got some. You know, so we're literally walking to each other's restaurants asking for stuff. Like, hey, uh, do you guys have this? It's like, yep, okay. And they're running over here in the middle of the day. Hey, we ran out of this. It's like, yeah, downstairs, go grab whatever, you know? So it's, it, it's so amazing to have this, like, neighborhood feel, even as operators around here. Me and Steph March is doing an interview here. Katrina, like, runs over in the middle, and we're still having, we're cleaning, we're still having construction, we're still, so we're talking, and literally this is last week, and she goes, um, our vacuum sealer just broke down, and I have 30 packs of tortillas I need to, uh, like, vacuum seal up, because it, in, like, an hour, they're coming to pick it up. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we just unpacked ours downstairs. So she comes in with 30 packs, she runs downstairs and vacuum seals them all. It's like, thank you, and runs out. And I'm like, and, and like for me, it was like, 
That's exactly what I'm talking about. It was so cool, you know. And what a simple moment. It, it was so simple. It. it was so like pure. Like she like like runs through the door and she's like, "Hey, uh, you guys have a vacuum sealer?" I'm like, "Yeah, we just literally unboxed it and plugged it in." Timmy, you know, our chef just plugged. Goes, <laughs> I just plugged it in. I'm like, "Okay, go, go, go!" And she was the first one to use it, you know. And then, and she's like, "Oh, thank you," you know. She's just so excited. And then, you know, there was our agar agar story. I'm like, "I guess got agar agar." He's like, "Yeah, yeah, come on over." And then like, they had it ready. We quickly grabbed it, ran back. You know, and so it was definitely that thing where I was like super excited. I was like, "This is what I'm like, talking about." We're in the about. right spot. Yeah, absolutely. And even like the team from Joni was there, but they've been so incredible. Like, hey, you guys need anything? You have any questions about how the alley works? Any questions about where parking is? Like, let us know. You know, because we've been here about five years or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I was just overhearing you chat with someone saying, "This is all a love letter to your parents." Have they been? And what do they think about the love letter? Yeah, you know, um, so they were here when construction was, you know, kind of halfway through. And I felt like that kid was like, it's not ready yet. Don't look, you know, and that's what I really felt like. And then they were here this uh, for friends and family uh, this past weekend. And, you know, my mom had this, you know, kind of very emotional moment. She called me later and she said to me, she said, uh, son, I never thought in my lifetime I would see one of my sons or daughters uh, build something like this before. And so for her, she was saying that I couldn't even imagine what this would have looked like, you know, and so it was really special to me, you know, here, here's a woman who uh, lived a life where she changed my life, and in a way of now being able to reciprocate that as a son to a, to a mom, and it was very special, and, and they were just super excited, too, and so she's so funny, too, because all her friends, like, text her and call her and says, oh, do you think we can get in, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, mom, so all her church lady friends, you know, the ones who are helping them uh, make the Galapagos for the state fair, were all, like, messaging her and saying, hey, um, do, do you think you'll have space for us, <laughs> and my mom's on the phone, she's like, yeah, just give them a call, you know, so it was super adorable. That's so amazing, and it, it has been a journey to get to this point, but in the meantime, you know, you have have TV shows and you have your other restaurants. I mean, you're all over the place. You've been very busy. Is that part of what stretched out the process of getting to this point where you were finally ready to open the doors here? Yeah, I mean, th there's just a lot of things. I mean, literally, when we finished our Kickstarter for this, you know, four, four years ago, the next month, COVID shut everything down. All restaurants were shut down. You know, so we didn't know what was going to happen there. And so then we kind of went to hibernation mode. And then just that buildup of that, you know, time after time, time after time, you know, eventually we had other opportunities to come in. So we slowly had this in the back burner. And then it came a point where it's like, we just got to gun this and just keep going. And we couldn't stop what was going on in the other spots too. But with that being said, I have an amazing team. So, so I have to be very clear on the record. It's just not me. There's this team. There is this, you know, just this force of great, incredible team that's doing amazing things. And, and they're in the back. And so it's incredible having that. And that I wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without our team makes sense because you can't do this alone this is a lot opening up a restaurant you've got a few dishes in front of us yep. show them a little love here because they're yep. beautiful so yeah so we I this call is, them uh, food art <laughs> yeah so this is our um uh, our grilled carrot dish and on the bottom we have a, a coconut yogurt on the bottom there but then it's just super herb forward you know and then we have a little bit of uh, some chili oils some herb oils on top and it's very basic it's grilled grilled carrots that you know, that's what it is but a lot of the seasoning a lot of the flavor is kind of what we grew up as monk kids eating and then the next thing here which have you know basically what it is it's a grilled chicken you know and and on the bottom we have this uh, ginger coconut vinaigrette on the bottom and then we just have a simple herb salad on top there and you know what I say about the uh, chicken I say it, it's all about finding that perfect piece with a nice crispy chicken on there with a great uh, you know with that great skin on there and then yeah just kind of dig in and then Add a little bit of that salad in there to cut through some of that fattiness. It's so delicious. Create and a perfect bite. Both were made over the fire. Yeah. So something so, you learned from your dad. Yep. So wood fire grill and everything was made over the wood fire grill. And we, you know, that, that's, that, that station is a beast right there. So at night, I mean, the, the person that's working that station is just drenched when you're done because it is <laughs> hot there. And I think you get up to about 700. So, I mean, that thing's just coming at you. But. We have, uh, we have like uh, two fans just blowing on you right there just to make sure that you stay cool. But that was a necessary part of this restaurant. Absolutely, that is one of the key components of this restaurant, you know, just being able to cook over wood fire, you know. Uh, understanding that that was one of the biggest things for generations and generations, our people have been cooking over wood fire. Love it. Well, now here we are, we're to opening day. Do you think there's a point you can like relax and take a look at it and be like, wow, we really did this, or is it just nonstop grind? 
You know, I think that over the last, I would say, six months of how when this building project was going on, I think that I've, I take little moments. You know, the quiet moments when all the construction guys were out here and it was just me, or the moments where you know, I come in here by myself in the morning, you know, just doing whatever, or late at night. Um, those are my, I think, those little special moments I keep for myself. You know, and, and that's, and I'm cool with that. And I, that's something where it's just like, when I look back and look at it, it's just like, wow, there were moments where we're like, is this project ever going to get done? You know, that, those are the questions. And to actually be here, it's incredible. I think that one of the greatest things about my mom and dad is just the way that they just like, they're like, hey, we want you to do your thing that, you know, that you'll enjoy and you'll have fun, you know. For the chicken dish, it's just kind of something that we've always had kind of at home uh, that we've done. Uh, but we just kind of changed a couple of the sauces, uh, a couple of the technique. But overall, I mean, it's pretty basically it's a grilled chicken dish, you know. Uh, and But every time I do chicken, I really love having vegetables in there too. So, you know, just throw a little little, little herb salad on top. The carrot dish, uh, you know, a lot of times carrot just gets boiled and it just, or, or, or overcooked. So I really wanted uh, to reflect in Hmong cooking, um, grill and 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 smoke and fire is such a big part of it uh, but a lot of times it's just focused on the protein only so one of the things i really want to do was to focus on um uh, a lot of the vegetables that were harder vegetables that can sustain that you know that beautiful smoke and absorb that fire but the mix between the sweetness of the carrots plus that you know that that smokiness is it's just a great mix and then the cooling factor of um the uh, the coconut yogurt is just, it's just so delicious. You know, I've told everyone that this place is a love letter to my mom and dad, and I want to make sure that that love letter is written in the way that my heart can express um, their, uh, the love that they have given to us, but more importantly, their legacy. So, you know, every piece of architect, every design in this whole restaurant reflects them. For example, in this grill, I learned how to grill. I learned how to cook meat over fire because my dad taught me how to grill over wood fire. And so, I mean, this is, this is the workhorse of this whole restaurant. Everything, a uh, majority of the meats come from this grill. And so, you know, this is like an homage to my father. And even when the first day he came in and he saw this grill, his eyes were wide big and he was so excited about it. You know, one of the most amazing thing is a lot of monk food is around uh, braised meats, stewed meats. So we constantly will have that on there too. So. You know, we're always having some kind of broth, uh, some kind of stew, some kind of soup going. So we're really excited for that. And then, you know, and then I think that a lot of uh, Hmong food, the reflection of that is very herbaceous, very crunchy. Uh, and so we have a lot of herbs that we're working with. And then also, my mom and dad actually provide a lot of our produce from their garden. So literally on Friday, they just send a big thing of mustard green and a big thing of banana peppers from the garden here. And they literally stop in the alley and then you know, four or five boxes go downstairs and we're processing them, getting them ready.